my focus as a naturopathic doctor has always been on anxiety. Um, and so it's interesting because obviously going into this, I've had my experiences with anxiety. I have honestly tried a ton of things that have helped me to a certain degree. So um, the way I summarize this is that you can eat very healthy and I've tried the pharmaceutical medications and you know, I never poo-pooed that because it really did help me when I really needed it. Um, I did the naturopathic stuff and my biggest lesson, my biggest takeaway from all of this is that you can have a very healthy lifestyle. You can take the natural supplements, you can do whatever it is. That all helps you to a certain degree. What none of that can change, whether you take a pharmaceutical, whether you take health supplements, whether you do a healthy diet, you exercise, like all that kind of stuff. What none of that can change is the rambling thoughts in your mind. You actually can't take anything to stop that really. Mm -hmm. And so I got myself to the point where I was feeling a lot more stable. I'm not on any medications anymore. Like I feel for the most part healthy, but every morning I woke up and I still didn't like myself. And I still had a lot of things that I would wrestle with, um, worrying about what people thought of me and everything that I did and like were people judging me like was I good enough and there was a lot of personal things going on so a lot of anger and resentment that I couldn't shake and mm. I I've tried so many things and I really like all things and and they all again all helped the two biggest things that kind of pushed me towards working with you one was that they all helped but things always came back like it would always be a trigger and then I would, it would just take so long to work through it. That was one. The second thing that really pushed me um, to, to work with you and, and, and learn more about transformology is that it's not like I don't have the tools to help my thoughts. I do, but it's a lot of effort. Like it's a lot yeah. of work. Like, I know how to question my thoughts. I know how to work through them. I have all the tools, all the journaling exercises. But it's just, like, it's a lot of effort when you're not feeling good to yep. have to go through that. And so I remember, like, all the physical sensations that I had um, when I reached out to you. And I, I, I just, I really liked your approach when you explained it to me, what it was going to be be like and you were so confident in it and you I remember very distinctly you just being like well like what do you have to lose like it's your own thing like you do it and then you play full out you do the thing if it doesn't work you tell me it doesn't work and you're like but well, you're not yeah. it's not gonna not work and so I just remember being like I was like very confident um but I really kind of felt like okay you're right like I, what do I have to lose like what do I have to lose at this point um I mm -hmm. might as well try it and within like a month of working with you. Like not like, I don't even remember the stuff we worked. I, I have vague recollections of some of it. But like, I like, honestly cannot tell you what the majority of my issues were anymore. Mm. And it's not that it's not that I forgot the events, because the events in my mind are still there. I know what I went through in my life. I just don't have the story around them anymore. Like it's a, yeah. it's, it's, a, it's an event that happened. It doesn't mean anything. I don't have a story around it. I don't have like a massive emotion around it. And just think nothing has helped me up till that point as much as when you and I worked together. Mm -hmm. And like it was a no brainer. Like after that, I remember, I know I'm sure you remember like every two months I'm like, Brie, are you, <laughs> are you training people in Canada? Yeah. Um, and so obviously like the first time it was offered, I jumped, I jumped on board. Yeah. I remember training like seven o'clock at night. Yeah. No, I, so I did, I did, um, I did uh, create tricks with you when I was pregnant. Yes. And then when we did train, when I trained to be a, like a transformologist, that was, we were in the middle of COVID. Mm -hmm. I had a five month old mm -hmm. and it was in the middle of the night. I remember it'd be like 7 PM to midnight yep. and you would just be like, Ellen, go to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> and, but it, that, it was it was such an exciting period of time too because you know for co for, for a lot of women covid co one of two things has happened either covid has given you the reason to just believe that the world is falling apart and nothing can be done and we're stuck in the situation that we're in or there's a lot of women that have gone right covid is happening life is changing things have become more unpredictable i want to take control of it how do i navigate and and leave COVID feeling more empowered and more in control of my future than I did mm -hmm. before. And that was the direction that, you know, you so bravely jumped into. And it was, you know, your tenacity along with a couple of the other girls in Canada that really led us to launching in, in Canada last year, which was exciting. Mm -hmm. so that was in May of 2020. Mm -hmm. And since then you have, um, so you were just telling me off camera, you've worked with, you've just finished your 10th client. You've got mm -hmm. another two ladies that are coming through the system to work with you for creatrix so in a what's that 16 17 month period you have well and truly returned the investment that you made oh last yeah month oh yeah yeah, yeah 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 for sure how have you found that that investment and the journey of taking the knowledge that you learned and actually implementing it and creating what you've been able to create i think it's really an interesting question. I have, um, it's such an invaluable tool for me that I truly haven't actually thought much about the investment that went in even when we first started. And mm. it's not to say that it wasn't an investment. Of course it was, but like, I don't, I don't think about it that much anymore i don't think about i mean you're totally making me pause and think about this now because i'm, I'm, I'm because since we started doing creatrix training which of course included um working on all of the the issues that were coming up for us as we were doing the training i had a lot of money issues that i worked through mm -hmm. and so now I don't even really think about it. Like I don't actually think about the investment and how much more I've made compared to that investment. Like it's just, I don't know. I, just, I don't even think about that mm. anymore. And interestingly that you said the whole pivoting during COVID thing, again, this is, I would completely attribute this to, to creatrix and transformology, but I have left my um, brick and mortar practice and pivoted my entire naturopathic practice online. Um, and build what that's and, and it's 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 completely different like people do not think that they have a medical professional who only sees them online like we're so used to going to see the doctor right like it's not mm. like a and creators was massive in helping me make these decisions to invest in me to stand firm in what i want to do for my family for my daughter what i want my lifestyle to look like and I love that every time I come up against the block, I just, oh, I need a cold pick. <laughs> I, need, I need to do something to like move beyond this. And then, then it's gone. Like it's, it's mm. done. It's done. It's not an issue anymore. And then I just move forward and make decisions. I think. Yeah. I, like, I love that. I love being able to just say like, I, I don't have to spend another however many months trying to work through this mindset thing. Like it's just, it's a cold pink. And then it's done. And, then and that's on. why I asked you the question, because for so many women that are in this group, they've already got the information about the, about the entire program and it's the investment. And look, we understand in uncertain times, investing in anything is scary. But when you also throw in the fact that it's an investment for you as an individual, knowing that women are very good at, at investing in everyone else. I'll give, you know, 10 grand to my kids' teeth because they need braces and I'll go and pay for new car tires because the car needs new tires. But, oh, shit, no, I need to spend money on me. I really want to do it. But it, they're the money blocks that 90% of the women in this group would have. So to hear you say that one of your biggest struggles was money blocks and now when we talk about the investment, it's not even a consideration because what you've gained from it, and correct me if I'm wrong, but what you've gained has gone above and beyond just this is how much money I've had to spend. It's, it's provided you with a completely different lifestyle to what you had, you know, 16, 17 months ago. Investing in the Creatrix like, Transformology program is basically an investment in a tool you can use, business training and personal development for yourself all at the same time. 
in a nutshell, right? Because every time I try to grow and, and there's no like, like each time you grow your business, you will hit something that you need to work through. That's not, that's not like, that's not just a creatrix or a transformology thing. That is every business you run. It doesn't matter what business you run. You could run a flower shop. Like it doesn't matter. You grow your business. You're going to hit a layer. Mm. Now you have to decide what you're going to do with that layer. Is that layer going to stop you or is it going to, are you going to burst through it and keep going? I think in other situations, that layer would take me so much longer to work through. Yeah. In creatrix, it is a code pink. <clears throat> and if one doesn't, isn't enough because you have other issues that have come up or you have like more lists then you just call a second coping <laughs> <laughs> and like maximum maybe for me two weeks two weeks maybe mm. and we're done we're done with the issue we're done with the issue the other thing i mean aside from business is that new new motherhood for me has been a massive trigger for somebody who's used to being independent who's used to doing things on her own used to being super efficient motherhood has taught me a lot of lessons yep we would be in a very shaky place if i didn't have creatrix along with that mm. so it's helped me not just in growing my business or pivoting or doing any of those scary things it's also helped me in my personal life like it's yep. there's multiple multiple times where where um something has gone something is going on with Elise and it like makes me feel a certain way and I feel a certain way. And then it's, it's a code pink and then it's done. It's, it's done. And I love that because one of the things that I was super worried about before having Elise was, would my emotional baggage ever be passed on to her and affect her development and her growth and her relationship with me. And now I have 100% faith that that's never going to happen because as soon as I recognize something, I literally just hop on and get it done and then it's done. And I know it will, it, it will not hurt the least because it's not hurting me anymore. Right. Whatever the, whatever the issue is. So yeah. Invaluable tool. <laughs> and so when, before we jumped on live, we were talking about, and you, you sort of tapped on it here as well. We were talking about um, the support that you've experienced within the program compared to, you know, other programs. And you've been around, how long have you been in business in total? Uh, since 2012. Okay. So you've been around for nine years. Yeah, I seem very old time. all of a sudden. <laughs> <laughs> but it's, it's a long time in business because um, longevity in any kind of business is not something that a lot of people can achieve. So to be around for that period of time, but you've been over the last nine years, I'm assuming, and because you're a woman who is passionate about learning and passionate about being on the cutting edge of new, you've probably been involved in quite a few different programs and things as well. So how does this program and the support and the all, all in one approach compare to some of the other things that you have experienced? Can I share the story that I shared with you? Yeah. Yes. Um, so I was telling Bree that I have, I just wrapped up um, the last session with probably the toughest client yet. Tons of learning around what that means. Um, you know, the, this, did I screen for right and readiness well enough? Did I do all the right things? Like, did I speak with, like, did I, did I, was I able to lead her through the sessions the way um, I need to lead her through. And there's just a lot of stuff that came up. And I very distinctly remember just in between two, two of kind of between our fourth and fifth sessions. Um, I just remember being like, if I cannot do this today, like if it is not going to happen today, I am, I'm going to call Brie. And not necessarily to ask Brie for help, which I know I can, but I was very, very comfortable knowing that if my personality and her personality were not going to jive to the degree and, and I not so much that we need to be like friends or whatever, but there's like, like I just, I needed to be able to lead her through this. And if I wasn't going to be that person for her, I wanted her to continue, but it didn't have to be with me. And one of the beautiful things about creatrix and transformology and the sisterhood that comes with it is that I have no doubt that I could have hopped on to our group and said, I need to work out with someone to take over the rest of the sessions for this client with me. I would have 
100% faith in the person who stepped up to do it because I know we're all trained really well. I know we all believe in the same philosophies and I know we're all committed to creatrix and transformology and what that looks like. And I wouldn't have a doubt. And I don't think I haven't come across any other programs where the bond between the people who are offering this program is so strong and we have so much faith in each other that I could, I could just pass on this client to someone. And I know that this client would be well treated. I know they will get the outcome that we've promised them. And I'm, I'm smiling because I was like, I, the next thing I'm going to say is like, I have no, I have no worries about what that other person, that other creator, transmologist thinks of me. Mm. Because I think we all understand the process. I've also worked on worrying about what other people <laughs> think of me as an issue for myself. So like, I feel like things just kind of wrap around in, in circles like that. And so, yeah, it's, it's, a, it, it's running a business where there's no competition. There's a lot of support. I know I could have called you and was like, Brie, I don't know what to do now. Like I'm kind of stuck in this situation and whatever. And I know you would have helped me. I, I could have reached out to Maz. I could have reached out to Helen. Like I know someone would have helped me through it. And if the decision was, she's not the, like, this is not the right fit, but we do want her to continue with transferology and creatrix, we would have found someone to do it and it would have gotten yes. done and it would have been a seamless transition. So how does that feel for you as a practitioner to be in an environment where there is so much support that, is also inclusive in the program because it, I, I know of other programs where if you need support, then awesome, it's available to you, but you've got to pay for a mentor mm. or you've got to, you know, you've got to invest even more in someone else being able to guide you through it. We don't do any of that. It's all included mm -hmm. because we want the best for the client at the end of the day. Mm. And that means supporting you guys as individual transformologists. Mm. So how does that feel for you as a facilitator to have that kind of peace of mind? It's, invaluable especially when you're starting out mm. especially when you're starting out because every step i don't say this in a bad way but like every step is a challenge your first pick is a challenge the first client you get on the call with is a challenge your first session is a challenge and then the first hiccup is a challenge like there's a challenge either way and you're right it's like I, I will put, and I've put questions in our, in our group before and I like, so I'm in Canada, so our time zone is completely different. Um, but my favorite part is like, I basically feel very reassured that I will punch in my question and go to bed. And then by the time I wake up in the morning, I probably have an answer. <laughs> and there's so much comfort in that. And I do have to like give a shout out to you and Helen and Maz because questions always get answered. And I can tell you this for a fact, because I am in another program. I am in a, a clinician entrepreneur mastermind. And I'm not saying anything. There's nothing bad about this, this group and how it runs. I love it. It's, it's different. It's not, it's not creatrix. It's not like this. It's, it's running your business. It's a little bit different with, with the clinician group. But when we signed on, I knew exactly how many coaching calls I was getting. I knew exactly who I was getting access to for how long. Everything gets scheduled. I get my business mentors for X number of times in a year. I get them for this amount of time. We have this many group coaching sessions. And if you have a question outside of that, you can email them, but you're getting in line. You're getting in line and you're waiting until they get, and that's, and again, I'm not saying this to, to say anything bad about this particular group. Like that's how they run. That's how so many groups run. Almost every mastermind I have been a part of, I've been a part of a bunch. This is mm -hmm. how it runs. This is just, this is the norm. There's very few, very, very, very few groups out there that teach you to run a business and a modality and help you do the personal development stuff where you can literally pop on and know that in a very short time, you're going to have an answer. And I remember even reaching out to you when I was struggling personally with Elise. Like there was a, like an instance where I was like, I don't even know what's going on with me. Like I can't actually figure it out and it needs to get, and you hopped on and you helped me figure it out. And then by the end of that week, the issue was done. Yeah. Thank you so much for sharing because I think that it, it's such a hard thing to express. And you know, again, everyone in this group, they've all, they've all been looking for some kind of program to step into. So they've heard the sales pitch from a thousand different people for a thousand different products. And we can say all the right words, 
but to to be able to convey it in a way that is actually received because it's genuine it's not just a sales pitch you know when when we say there's support unlimited around the clock they're words on a piece of paper but to actually hear someone that's experiencing that there's so much value in your experience so thank you for yeah for sharing that I just with it's really like I, i'm really glad we're having this conversation because it's really making me realize like what other because it's technically a business program right mm. yep what other business program do i get to hop on and like reach out to the mentor and be like free i'm losing it with my daughter <laughs> <laughs> which is basically what was happening what do i do like how do i how do i navigate this and you like helped me figure out what the issue was we hopped onto a code pink and then it was gone and that has nothing to do with my business it really did and i love that you just said that because women are not the same as men women are intertwined so if you're struggling in your personal life it is going to affect your business life we're not men. we can't compartmentalize mm. Mm. right like it goes both ways right absolutely and it so has to be a holistic approach if there's a if there's an area that you're struggling in in any part of your life there is going to be a ripple effect that plays out mm. in other areas of your life and given that you know our our if you look at every single one of us individually the big goal is to help other women mm -hmm. you know whether that is help one woman whether it's help 10 women whether it's help 100 women the goal of every transformologist is to help another woman to feel more empowered mm -hmm. we can't do that if we're still struggling in any capacity mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think so that we, we have this really interesting spiral, I feel, in Creatrix Transformology, like the group. Is that so like I'll hop on, let's say, let's say I hop on and do a co-pink for another sister who's reached out for help. And in doing that co-pink, I start to realize either I'm triggered or I am judging her in any way, as an example. I'm mm -hmm. not saying I'm judging people, <laughs> but, but let's say it does. Let's, let's say like you pop on and all of a sudden you realize you're like, oh, I'm like thinking about this person in a certain way. Then you just, you're so emotionally aware now that you go, oh, I shouldn't be thinking that. Like, what does that mean about me? Like, what's going on for me? Like, why is that triggering me? And why am I thinking about that? And then you just hop on another co pink and then it gets resolved. So then like, you just kind of keep going through this like cycle a really good cycle about helping other people realizing if you're triggered and then and then it's like it's the, the best thing about it is I could probably get on with the exact same person that I just did a coping for it was like hey during your session I realized that I was thinking this and I don't feel good that I'm thinking this and then she would be like great no problem let's do a coping for you and there's like no judgment there's just like we all just understand that things come up because things come up and we all have baggage and we all have layers and layers of things and because I've never felt safer to get on a code pink and just be like, here's really what's happening. Here's how I feel. Here's the thoughts going through my mind. Let's get rid of it. And like, I've never felt judged. Never. It doesn't matter how ridiculous that whatever it is that I'm thinking of. Yep. Which, which means in turn, you can work with any client with any situation and she's going to feel as safe with you as you do with others because you know it, it's that whole mirror thing if mm -hmm. if you feel judged then there's a there's a chance that you pass what you're feeling on to the people that you're working with this is why facilitator development is so crucial because the more free you are from any of those things the more you're able to connect with women in an authentic and genuine way mm -hmm. without it having to be pushy without it having to be forced it's just a connection a heart-to-heart -heart conversation that allows women to step towards you so that you can then help them to elevate it's the questions we're taught to ask it's the questions that we're taught to ask when we're trying to figure out what's really going on they're phrased in a very 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 gentle and very non-judgmental way that helps you get to the root of the thing whatever the issue is um without having to dig without having I don't, I've never actually needed to share an uncomfortable story with someone to get an issue done ever. I've actually explained this to like several clients who are like, so are you going to like need me to like spill all the things that are making me uncomfortable? I'm like, no, you don't have to tell me anything. You know, literally, I do not need to know your story. You can share it with me if you feel, you know, you desire to, but 
I don't, I don't actually need to know what happened during said event that's making you feel the way. I, all I need to know is how you're feeling. And then you should and see how the face. powerful is that? Yeah, and definitely. <laughs> definitely faces of people being like, you don't need to hear the story. I'm like, I actually don't. Really, I don't. And I like explaining it too, because then I'll say like, you've probably explained your story to a ton of people. And each time you explain it, you feel better because you get a little bit off your chest. But it's still there. Because the story isn't the problem. The, the event is not the problem. The event, how you felt because of that event and what you think of yourself because of that event is, is what I care about. So yes, I care that something happened to you. I understand why we'll, I'll happily share and listen to your story. But it doesn't need to play a role in what you and I do. And I think it's such a relief for people because I have worked with women who feel ashamed of decisions that they have made in the past. And they don't want to relive it. They don't want to have to tell me the story. They don't want me to like, they don't want me to, or they don't want to worry that I'm judging them or any of those things. So they don't, they don't want to open up and talk about that story. And the beautiful thing is it doesn't matter, right? It doesn't matter because that event doesn't matter. It's like what you thought about the event, the story you keep telling yourself about the event is what matters. It's not the event itself. It's a story you keep telling yourself about that event. That's what I need to know and how you, that story makes you feel. And that's what we're going to work on. So it actually doesn't matter what the event is. And like the, um, there's relief in women when you tell them. There's so mm -hmm. much relief knowing that they've already had to rehash their story and they don't want to do it again. And it also helps us move a lot faster because if you, yeah. if I had to wait for this person to gain enough trust with me to spill out their whole story, it could take a very long time, really long time. But I don't, I don't, because I don't need to know the story. Then they're kind of like, oh, well, it gets just so much safer and so much faster. They just all have to do is tell me how that story makes them feel. And then we can move on. And you were just saying in, in terms of the speed, you know, you, you share the story about how you've just finished working with your toughest client. You worked with her for only what, six weeks or something. Mm -hmm. So even, you know, when, when we look at other approaches, six weeks is a drop in the ocean. And that, that is for a tough client. So to know that you can work with a tough client and get her through still in a very timely fashion mm -hmm. and get her over the edge because mm -hmm. the tool works, the process works, the support is there for you as a facilitator, that must give you a lot of reassurance to know that you are able to help 100% of the women that come to you with 100% of the problems that they present with. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There is no problem. There is no like issue or emotional baggage that I think creatrix wouldn't be able to resolve. I mean, we're taught very clearly what we're screening for, right? Like we're, we're, we, we can't do creatrix on someone who has very unstable mental um, condition. Again, not because we're judging them or being discriminatory. It's just because you can't do the creatrix process if you're not able um, hmm. to have that kind of stability to even follow through with what creatrix the process actually looks like. And so I think that's completely fair. I think it's safe, you know, and I think, yeah, like six weeks was how long it took this, this client who really was the toughest one I've done. And that was with a lot of reschedules. <laughs> so <laughs> could have potentially been faster. Yep. Yep. So, yeah. Well, thank you so much, Charlotte. I'm loving that this conversation has been so centered around the support because it is such a crucial part for women in business to feel supported, you know, mm -hmm. and particularly like, you know, if we link it back to what we were talking about with COVID, there's a lot of women that are out there trying new businesses. It is very hard to succeed in business when you don't have a support network. Mm -hmm. And when that support network comes with conditions, it becomes even harder. Mm -hmm. I so, actually would, I would venture to say it's impossible mm -hmm. to build a business without support. That is not something I need to create tricks. That is not a belief. That is an issue because it is actually a fact. <laughs> you yeah. do need support when you build a business. Particularly as women. Women, we are wired to be in communities and tribes in, when that is a supportive environment that enables you and encourages you to grow. It, there's just so much power in that. Yeah. Agreed. Totally agree. Yeah. yeah. I know we've got Belinda Hindmarsh online and she said the same thing. She's working with her first client at the moment and it's, 
Cool it's been a big learning curve. But again, every step of the way, she's been supported and she's been able to ask questions, which has meant her client is getting the result that her client deserves. And that's ultimately why Creatrix Transformology exists. It's not, it's not actually about us as the facilitator. And yeah. again, dare I say, so many approaches are focused just on what's in it for the coach. You know, how successful yeah. can the coach get? How much money can the, can the coach get? It's, it's not about that for us at all. You know, we, the, the growth that we have is a byproduct of focusing on how we can help other women. Mm. Oh, you know, my favorite part, one of my favorite parts of all of this is that yes. philanthropic stuff. I say that, it sounds so bad when I say that. The philanthropic part of <laughs> Creatrix, which is like at the very end, and this is like, I don't, this is a commitment I've taken on because you've, you've all shared it with me in the in the past but the commitment i've taken on is to make that donation um to a charity and so i my stipulation you know just through my own choice is that the charity needs to support women in in some way shape or form and to be able to take part of their their investment in the transformology process and take that and make a donation to a charity of their choice or i share with them the three that i work with and get them to pick one I haven't had a single person who just hasn't kind of like teared up a little bit at the end, kind of hearing that for me, it's the belief that for every woman's heart we set free, there is a ripple effect to everybody's, all the lives that she touches. And this, this donation is an amplification of that ripple effect. Yeah. And that's been a very firm belief of mine that if, how should I say this? I think everybody wants to make money. I think it's okay to want to make money in your business, obviously. Right. But to be able to be like, I'm going to, I'm going to grow my business while, while helping my business is already helping people. But then to be able to commit to saying it's more than that, it's more than the one person that I'm helping. We pick charities that, you know, support women who have left abused relationships or, you know, kids who don't have, you know, finances to support their schooling or like, I don't know, I don't know which other, which other business out there kind of, I don't know, I don't know, I don't want to say trains us like that, but it was part of it. It was part of like when we, when we did our training, it was like, this is something that you could do to support, you know, the ripple effect. And I love that part. Like I really, really do. And it's like a big part. It's like one of my favorite parts at the very end when I share this with, with the clients and we pick a charity together. Like that's, yeah, that's big. Special. Mm -hmm. Very. Mm -hmm. Very. Yeah. Well, Miss Ellen, thank you so much for your time. I know it's getting on late over there in Canada. Yeah. <laughs> I know you um, and you've probably got to get up early with little Elise. So mm -hmm. thank you for your time. I love speaking with you always. You know, I, I just find you've got such an eloquent way of being able to express what so many women experience in this space. And, um, yeah, I appreciate your time. I, and I, I love so much that you are out there building a really impactful business helping women. Like that's just, you, you are living the legacy that Maz set out when she created the entire program. You're out there doing it. And when enough of us are out there doing it, that goal to set 10 million hearts free, it is inevitable that it will happen mm -hmm. when we've got women like yourself in our, in our camp. So thank you. No, thank you for, uh, again, for being an amazing support personally and professionally, being a great mentor and a great friend. And I love speaking with you. So thank you for inviting me. You're welcome, darling. We'll talk soon. We will okay. talk soon. Okay. <laughs> Thanks, everyone.